Hello and welcome. My name is Ingrid Bachman. I'm a professor in the Studio Arts and MFA area at Concordia. And I'm really delighted to welcome you all to our another lecture in the Conversations in the Contemporary Arts series. I hope we will see you um, at these. They happen twice a month. And um, now I'd like to introduce Raymond Dapril, professor in photography, who will introduce our speaker tonight, Chichi Wen. <laughs> uh, hi everybody, my name is Raymond April. I'm the acting as the coordinator for the photo program. Chi Tian Wang is my colleague, very dear colleague, and we've been sharing the same office for uh, a couple of years, three years. So I feel I don't know him well enough, so I'm going to read from <laughs> this paper, it won't be long. Um, okay, this is Chi Tian Wang. Uh, born in Taiwan, Chi Chen Wang has been living in Montreal since 2002. He obtained a BFA in theater and cinema from the Chinese Cultural University in Taipei in 1994 and worked for several television companies producing documentaries before moving to Canada. Uh, Chi Chen obtained an MFA in studio arts at Concordia University in 2005. Already eight years. Yes. Um, I'm going to read you just a small excerpt of his thesis uh, artist statement. The thesis show uh, took place at Dazibao. Um, so this is Chi Chen speaking. During the past three years, I accumulated images on different attempts, but all the attempts had similar results. I treated them all as my self-portrait. There are several issues I tried to provoke. Decay of cognition, identity, migration, <coughs> and language <coughs> practice. I convey all these thoughts and dots through photographic and video practices, such as self-portrait on different daily occasions, portraits of people who entered my personal domain, <coughs> portraits of people who I met frequently, ownership of objects and their packaging, food in various states, fresh, moldy, or in between. In the last three years, taking pictures was an important part of my life. I used my camera eye to think and to build up conversation in my solitary space. And the show was titled, The Center of the Forest is a Lake-like Mirror. Uh, Chichen has received grants from the Canada Council for the Arts. Uh, Le Conseil des Arts et Lettres du Québec has participated in residency programs at Pr uh, Prim Video, Prim, and El Basilico in Buenos Aires. Uh, <coughs> since 2004, his work has been seen in solo and group exhibitions held in Montreal, Lausanne, Milan, New York, Pignao, Peterborough, Toronto. Recent solo and group exhibitions include in Montreal, Optica, Artefact, Dardar, Mois de la Photo in Montreal, and the Leonard and Bean Island Gallery here in Concordia, Zenith Gallery in Beijing, Pierre-François Ouellet, our contemporain, who represents his work, and the Quebec Triennale, in 2008. And last year, uh, Tichen presented uh, As Far As We Were at the uh, Carré d'Art Contemporain at the Museum of Fine Arts in Montreal. And right now, he has a solo show in Rimouski titled <laughs> Translation. <laughs> Translation. Translation. So, uh, without further uh, introduction, this is uh, Tichen Wang. Thank you. Thanks for coming. I was quite surprised that uh, what I prepared to say was almost the same as my thesis uh, text eight years ago. <laughs> That's very... Um, well, I don't know how to say it because I think the first thing I want to talk to you about uh, all my work is this definition of the self. Uh, the person, the first person, the I, because um, most of time when I was writing, when I was thinking, I don't like to think about uh, I as the first person. Um, but contrarily, uh, when we produce work or when we start to collect things to, um, to look into our own uh, production or perceptions, I is always the main character. And this person seems to be uh, close, but also very far away from me. 
So I was trying to um, define this person, and I find that uh, probably most of my, my work is in that process of defining the self. So um, before, I, I try to um, have a very quick uh, cat uh, categories of myself. So uh, <coughs> the I, the perception of the self, and also the, the self recognized by the others. And I also, um, another self which is someone I saw, uh, I saw how people look at me. And then uh, it's the body, the physical uh, treasures of the body. And then also how do we, uh, either through ourselves or through the others, to recognize ourselves. It's quite interesting in a way, the perception of the self is a combination of all these uh, different things because we, yeah, we, we know ourselves in a way and uh, we also know, somehow we know some other, how people look at us and somehow we thought, we thought we know but that's only our own illusion. Right. <clears throat> so this uh, various distance is very fascinating to me and I produced my very first uh, project at Cambodia back to 2002. It was a series of uh, self-portraits. The portraits of myself uh, covered uh, with a mask, mask made of rice. It was because at the time I just arrived in Montreal and I started to um, recognize the difference and also being maybe overly conscious about the look of myself, the difference between me and the others. So that was the first project. Um, but I'm not going to show that images right now. <laughs> I'm going to the another, next point. And then it's the surroundings. The surroundings usually is about the personal space. So, um, and the navigation through the, the personal space, and then also negotiating and inter interacting with the space. By working around the space, by um, adding or removing objects in the personal space, um, I think uh, it's a practice to help us to maybe uh, have access to to the surroundings, also to um, by doing all those actions, trying to study study the self and the and the surroundings. And then the third one is objects. The objects uh, is about the object as an object, also the object as a projection of the self. Again, uh, it might involve several actions which we could apply on the objects. Another interesting point is uh, the use of uh, camera photography <coughs> because photography does have this uh, strength of capt capturing what's in front of it and presenting it um, directly. So. My interest is that uh, all those very temporary moments usually becomes eternal through that use of photograph. I don't mean eternal. I mean eternal. I mean the because the image is frozen there, so mm, it, as long as it's there, it's uh, it doesn't change right. at a certain point. <coughs> so the very last one is about relationship. Um, I find, well, okay, see this is my note to myself, stop talking about yourself, <laughs> look at her, her I mean uh, Yushan, Yushan uh, is my partner, uh, she came to visit me uh, back in two, um, 2002 since I first arrived in Montreal, so, um, um, okay, I'm going to focus on her. Focusing on her. 
So, um, because in 2002, when I arrived in Montreal as a uh, new immigrant, I uh, I plan to start. Uh, I, I plan to study, but um, I didn't have much things to do. And at the time, right after I start school, Yushan went back to Taiwan, and then she came to see me probably uh, once or twice a year. And. Um, Mm, so th there was something quite interesting before and after. Before uh, she came, I was alone, and after she arrived, we were together. I guess it's quite normal. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but that kind of uh, relationship, in a way, um, it's like it makes myself into. Uh, to kind of self, you know, because as long as you are you are only with yourself, you you are alone, and your uh, all your senses, your the way you recognize the surroundings is only a kind of dialogue to yourself. But once uh, the other person is involved in your life, then uh, someone is share, sharing that point of view. So I want to start with the very first project, which I'm going to show you. Ah, this is another project. <laughs> okay, so the very very first one is a <coughs> video I made in uh, I shot them in two thousand eight, but I didn't got a chance to use them until last year. Last year when I was preparing uh, the show at the Museum, Museum of Fine Arts. <coughs> I edited it, but in the end I didn't include it in the show. However, I, I think this is a good opportunity to show you uh, this video.
the reason uh, showing you this video is that uh, I want to prove uh, that I took some French courses. Yes, <laughs> 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 the those footage was shot at uh, Sainte Saint Louis uh, during the break. So I well I I actually took four courses or maybe more than four, and I tried. And I'm still I'm I'm still going to uh, keep trying. And uh, I'll skip this. So the fir very first project is uh, called Contract, which was shot in two thousand uh, probably two thousand three. Uh, because we just arrived, she came to visit, and um, she started to notice that I pay lots of attention to surroundings, right? Objects, because objects is myself. So she was super bored and she <laughs> didn't understand how come a school can change me into that. So um, we, uh, well, it's hard to, for, for her to be here and yeah, and I don't really stay, uh, pay attention to her. So we had an agreement that as long as she was here, I would only photograph her nothing else. So I'm going to, going to show you some of her images at that point. So uh, the idea was that, okay, she would let me photograph her whenever I ask. And in exchange, I would only photograph her without anything else, right? So I started to uh, pay attention to our um, everyday life and then to also try to see how she looks like, what kind of status she was in, and also perhaps uh, in a way we could have good relationship and also produce good images. But as you might have noticed that uh, in the very end, this is probably the very last few images she started to cry because it was also not fun at all. Not fun because uh, it's not an equal relationship, right? If I am the one to decide uh, when and how she should post for me, even though yeah, she is, uh, even though I don't do something else, but it doesn't matter, it, it doesn't mean anything to her. So anyway, it's, uh, I quite like this project, but it's a very short project. And then, <clears throat> after that project, I started to work on another one, uh, which was um, my self-portrait. Uh, once she's not in Montreal, I have all the time with myself. And then, um, I'm going to show you the image first. So my idea was that um, I I want to focus on the status of the self, right? And um, we, even though as the same person, but we still have very various kind of uh, appearance, mood, and um, yeah, we are just different every day, every moment. So I chose three um, timing. The very first one was uh, in the early morning right after I woke up, before I go to pee. So, since I have the camera set up uh, right by my door, every morning I woke up, I walk to the camera, take a picture, and then to do whatever I need to do, and then either uh, keeping awake or go back to sleep. And the second uh, image was taken in the afternoon, right after I uh, arrived home. So from the outside, I would bring things back like uh, the groceries or some mails in the mailbox. Everything I bring with me, I would hold it on my head and show it to the camera. <coughs> and in the very end of the day, I also took a picture of myself because as a new immigrant, uh, I do have a high expectation about the future. So I bring one of my best suits with me from Taiwan. 
and at the time I still uh, didn't have the chance to wear it so I decided uh, to use the suit uh, to make a project so I dressed up every night and I chose one uh, daily object something probably be meaningful to me at that day and then I show it to the camera so this is the self in the morning in the afternoon and in the evening um, this practice uh, is quite meaningful to me because it's very comforting you know every day you know someone is waiting for you the camera is waiting for you the first thing you wake up you don't need to think you, you know you need to walk to that place you take picture and then uh, you start the day, everything will be right because you do that. Every, every afternoon, you arrive home and then, yes, you, you have a dialogue with the camera. And this dialogue becomes a ritual, and this ritual, uh, in a way, uh, is, it solidifies my everyday life. So, In two, 2005, uh, October, Yushan arrived in Montreal as a uh, new immigrant. Uh, that was a similar status as mine. So right after she arrived, she started to explore the city, not as a visitor anymore. As a visitor, you would always want to go to try some uh, exotic food, go to see some sceneries. But as a new immigrant, you want to, firstly, you want to learn the language. Secondly, you want to know where is the job. So that was a very similar situation uh, to me because I, I, saw, uh, yeah, I, I saw all those exper experiences, my personal experience is happening on her again. And that's very uh, fascinating. So I produced the project, it's called Yushan is Here. I'm going to show you some of the installations. So it was shown at uh, Aptika. It's a mixture of uh, still lives and her portrait in some uh, fleeting moments. So we try to have fun. There are two uh, videos. One is a video, video uh, diptych, the other one is a single channel. In these single channel videos, I have collected around 30 uh, video clips. Uh, all the clips, uh, they are all quite short, and in the end of the clip, uh, they always end at the moment when Yushan turned his head to look at me. I'll show you one of the video videos.
This is my own. This is not enough. <laughs> How boring was that? <laughs> <laughs> to spend all the time with each other, but also holding a camera towarding us. But that's a way. Um, the camera is a tool um, to study, to adapt to uh, the, the situation. It's a tool for, for us, for me or for her. I, I believe also for her. It's a tool that uh, we can use to learn, to share, and also to defend ourselves. So, um, Actually, before that project, Yushan is here, I had this another project, uh, my thesis project shown at uh, Dazibao. <coughs> um, that was the idea to use and to focus on the, uh, the camera itself. <coughs> the camera as an uh, interaction, creates an in interaction of uh, the self, camera as, a, as the skin, and then the image world becomes the reality. I. Grandma mistake means I I enjoy this mistake I have made because the center of the forest forest is a lake like mirror. It must something must be wrong, right? It doesn't seem right, but I don't know how to say it. Anyhow, so I'm going to show these images. One image after another. There are quite a few.
is mesmerizing, right? <laughs> How many images were there? There are uh, 48. And quantity becomes a very important part of my uh, process because I noticed that a uh, single image in a way, uh, for me, seems hard, seems hard to be, to, to point to the center, to the core of a situation or, um, or something I'm interested, I was interested. Also, um, the connections among images become something quite interesting to me. And actually, this kind of collection, connections uh, somehow becomes one important uh, language for me. <coughs> There's also a video with <coughs> in the project at the uh, show. It's a very short video, only 40 seconds. I found these uh, clips while I was editing something else, and I was fascinated by uh, her uh, expressions. She was very uh, gentle, but in a way she was also mad at me. And I find that I found that uh, how she she was able to um, to either hide or her uh, emotion and then give me the best smile even though she was mad and also uh, again camera the use of camera or taking pictures becomes a common um, language a uh, tool for us to communicate with each other so uh, another earlier work in, in 2004 mm, is also dealing with uh, the <coughs> self-portraits, the bodies, and then uh, the use of languages. Um, I want to talk about a little bit about the self again because um, that's a kind of thing that is. It, uh, it's exclusive, right? Because as long as you are alone, you are not with someone else. And if you are with someone else, you are not alone again. Unless if in certain kind of status that you are with someone else, but you actually feel alone, then that would be, I don't know. I don't know how well we see that. Um, but that's the thing, because I started to I was also interested in that kind of uh, solitude, not only uh, looking at myself, but also looking at the others. And uh, this, so I walk on the street and then I saw people, they are in their own world, even though the surroundings are either quite crowded or noisy, but they are always people. They seem to disappear to, from the world only they are only with them only with themselves so i started to uh, observe these people and they also also taking note taking notes uh, about that very short and simple uh, observation and this action of taking notes also give me an opportunity to think to think of uh, photography because uh, this another uh, exclusive uh, experience <coughs> as long as you take one medium you are uh, you reject another medium right as long as you use a camera you 
probably would miss that opportunity to observe without using camera. If you take, yeah, it's something like that. So uh, that's some kind of decision I was struggling with. Should I try to capture all those moments, all those observations using a camera, or should I only observe but without using camera at all? And uh, I chose the later because, well, sometimes we get lazy, right? And it's also complicated to confront a stranger. We could do it, we could do that. Lots of time we could do that. I don't know, well, forgive me. So I take notes. I write down all those notes and then I started to, to treat those notes as a kind of tool that somehow I might be able to recreate things with uh, the use of actors and then we can create all those uh, fleeting moments of, of observing others. But before that, I actually had another opportunity to use them as note itself and use the note as a, as a, as a photograph. So firstly, I want to show you the videos of meeting with strangers. video is uh, dictate, uh, they are a little bit long and they, because the length on the two channels, they are different, so uh, you will see um, different combinations. I'm going to show you three minutes. Um, it's a very generous offer when a stranger approaches you and you accept uh, to be photographed, you accept to be videographed. Um, around two months in uh, 2009 or 10, I did this project. I started to uh, go to the park and then to ask strangers, ask them to stay there, uh, do what they were, continue what they were doing, and then let me look at them using my video camera. So some of them accept, some of them refuse. 
but uh, as long as people accept to uh, let me see them, I recognize the kind of exchange. It's not only because uh, I am the one who is seeing them, it's also because they sense my movements. They know where I were and also how I uh, look at them. Almost like that. It's, it's like we have uh, connections. Somehow, I even feel it's a very intimate uh, connection among two uh, strangers, even though the moments probably would be very short. So I collect all those uh, strangers, all those mo uh, moments, and then, yeah. Um, I was also interested in that uh, boundary of uh, working with strangers, how much we can uh, push and how much we can we are willing to uh, to offer so at a certain point I also asked the strangers to go to my studio and then we have uh, some video shoot and photo shoot the work was presented at uh, last year at the museum I'm going to show this um, uh, maquette So we, we enter the space. And then you might notice that on the left and in the front, the two sets of images, they seem a little bit identical. It is very important in a way that uh, you need to move, you need to walk to go approach to one single images or you need to step back to see the whole thing and then if it's interesting enough to you then you would probably start to notice uh, this confusing moment, how come things might be similar but also has the, the potential to be different. I was quite interested in that kind of experience because the the way uh, how our perception was is constructed somehow I find it's always fleeting and it also very much relates to um, <coughs> memories. So on the left side the two walls there are two sets of images and then on this side uh, the two the video diptych two projections and then on another wall there were a set of nine images I want to show you this uh, videos on the small, on one of the wall. I also want to read it out with you. In my dream, what I didn't want to make was green bean soup. I real, realized that after I woke up and cooked it. So there is this, again there is a grammar mistake here but we're not going to there. Um, I think this consequence is interesting that uh, we, saw we, we saw we knew, but actually we, we know it only after we made a mistake. And that's the way how I see uh, this project because the whole project is a uh, comparison. Also, it's uh, it's um, yeah, this this back and forth process of recognizing what's real and what's unreal for me is showing the division of the reality and another parallel uh, reality.
this uh, project call as far as we were, as close as I can. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I ask this question because when I look at this project, uh, I also feel that uh, the sense of uh, called existence of the current and the uh, past or of okay, let me say it's that feeling that okay, even if we are with someone, we can feel solitude. Even if we are here, we are actually not here. And these feelings uh, if we uh, put it in our relationship it probably probably means the end of a relationship, right? Because you were with her, but you were actually not with her anymore. That's why I had this question. Um, and this kind of um, coexistence and confusing um, status uh, also make me feel like to explore more, not only in personal relationship, but also in that uh, cognition of uh, space and time. The space and time, which I mean, uh, this small universe where we are, we probably, it's based on our understanding, it's happening right now, and it's the current. But I'm, I'm, I was just trying to uh, propose that uh, this current actually has happened before, and what we are seeing as the future is actually in the past. So I create this uh, installation. It's called uh, Happening is Recurrence. What I did basically was um, I made an installation of around uh, 20 uh, aluminum cylinders. And all these cylinders, uh, the viewer, the visitors come to the space, they are invited to spinning to spin them. By spinning them, uh, the thread <coughs> attached underneath the cylinder is creating a shape. And what I was interested in is that how this shape is actually uh, repeating itself. So on the one side, uh, the installation is uh, interactive, <coughs> but on the other side, there is a video camera uh, documenting the space and then replaying the space in a one to ten minutes interval, which means it documents this one minute and then it, it plays back this uh, one minute <coughs> ten times and then it documents another minute again and then it, it plays back another minute for ten times. So we are always seeing the current and the past. I'm going to show you one of the video. Here, sorry. So it's a constant uh, documentation lasts for six weeks and all those uh, single minutes being stored in a hard drive. Another uh, project which I try to study uh, the relationship between time and uh, space is through a box which was given to me by Maxime Hua. We worked on this project for uh, RTV. It's a program called Van der Kahage. Basically, uh, Maxime gave me a box, her personal box which she used to store uh, her letters in the past 20 years. And uh, I received this box trying to make uh, our project 
an artwork out of it. Um, because I find uh, there are lots of decoration on the box, and it's something very difficult for me to deal with. Unless I uh, strip off all the decoration, the pants, everything. Also, what interests me the most is actually the the space inside because that space is capable of capturing, uh, preserving someone's uh, very personal memory for 20 years. So I decided to use that uh, volume, the inside of the box, and to create a work. The idea is, I am I was going to um, work. Uh, manipulate that uh, interior, interior volume and use it as a small unit to measure another type of space. <coughs> so this is the the end result. I uh, use that uh, kind of a kind of AB form to fill the box and then remove the volume, cut them into small pieces, and then these small uh, cubes as a material, then I would use them to measure the space. Sorry. This one. It's somehow like a game because well, I'm using Maxine's uh, memory us and also her past as a measurement. But measuring one uh, element with another personal or subjective uh, components for me is somehow quite interesting. So I also create another project which is using uh, photography to measure my personal space. It was done uh, at, in 2009 2010, when my son was back to Taiwan to, vis to visit uh, my wife's families, I was here alone, and then I photographed my uh, space. <coughs> I document a space which was in between the window and the kitchen. It's my living room. And I use this documentation to recreate two space on two walls. The idea was not to show what actually was seen in with the camera, but more like to show how uh, this individual moments has been kept and how they uh, they how they create divisions, how they break it that space. And what I did uh, in that, uh, within that space was, I was playing a song. I was playing a piano, mm, a song to my son every day. But I'm not a piano player, so actually it was very hard for me. So I also made these two videos. I was uh, very, I concentrate on uh, each note. I'm going to show you the pro a project about water. I'm sorry if I keep showing works and works, but it's, I guess it's probably easier for me. This is the very end of a video piece which was done in 2000, shot in 2007, and presented in 2008. It's a 14 minutes long video. There are two major parts. One part is inside a space. <coughs> the other part is outside a space. People who are inside the space, they are... Well, I should show you right now. <coughs> it's the very end of the video.
As an outsider, it might not be very fair to say what I have reserved, uh, what I have observed in Buenos Aires is totally true. But that impression of seeing some thing, some, for instance, uh, the project came from uh, what I've seen on the street. There was water uh, on the street over in the neighborhood where I live. Uh, it's called uh, Avellaneda, and all those water. Since I arrived, there weren't any rain actually, but the water seems to be there for a long while. So one day I decided to put my video camera on uh, inside the water on the street. It's not very, it's not a lot, but it's able to uh, totally totally merge the camera into the water, <coughs> and then. Uh, through that uh, video tapes, I noticed there are some lives living inside the water. Those water, the rain water. I was fascinated, but also confused by the fact that uh, again, it's not a very uh, might not be a very responsible uh, reaction. But I, I just don't understand how come those water needs to be staying there for such a long time, and how. Yeah, how, how do we deal with this kind of situation? So I decided to take water as a simple theme and started to talk to people, to find people, to meet with people, and then mm, finally, in the end, I find a group of, uh, a theater group. They usually practice together, and they are talking about uh, their medical system in Buenos Aires. <coughs> And I decide, and then I also find that space, that factory space, an abandoned space. So I invited, and then I found another group of uh, singers. I invited these two groups of people to the same space, and then I fill uh, water into that factories. And then I asked the singers, the four singers, go into the space one after another to sing a song about water. The other group outside, they talk, they talk very, they talk a lot, they are just talking and talking, but uh, the topic they talk are also about water. The water. There is a water park by the city, and there was a snow, a snow which they have never experienced in the past 50 years, and how they expect the snow to purify their political situations. All these kind of things related to water, they are being collected together and yeah to make it into one single piece another water I was working with is uh, back to Yushan in the year 2008-2009 where um, well, she gave birth of our son Shara in 2009 before she gave birth uh, to him uh, we went to Oka to walk in the summer <coughs> and it, it, it was very beautiful because the, the water is nice and it was a sunny day but I saw she was extremely exhausted um, yeah tiredness is beautiful I know that um, it, it's her experience it's my it's not my experience but I do know that was what we well what we were supposed to go through. So I decided to take that, pi that picture as uh, an inspiration and then to work on uh, 
video piece. It's actually a video installation of four channels videos and in the end I didn't really show the whole image the whole image because mm, I find that kind of appreciation how much I like the tiredness of her or how much I like the light doesn't seem to be that important anymore. Instead I was interested in that moment, that very simple moment. Would it be possible to be expanded? Would it be possible by looking through looking at it again and again over and over? Is it possible one moment becomes alive again? So I have four videos. I'm showing you uh, two of them. eyes and then the <coughs> leaves Um, now I want to uh, change the direction of uh, my interest. It's outside of myself. Somehow it's still relating to uh, uh, the idea of personal space, but uh, not in my actual apartment. Instead, it's outside. I made this um, installation um, in my end. It's where uh, the dark dark was in 2000, 2009. <coughs> what I did was uh, collect a uh, couple of boxes. I collect the boxes and then I pile them together to create a space under the uh, viatic and I painted the interior white. On these two ends, I attach uh, two contact mics under the bridge. So and inside the space, there are two uh, loudspeakers. Uh, so the sound of the traffic being transformed into something like uh, tide, the, the tide of ocean. And my, my interest was that uh, a public space can become a personal space and a personal space can also relate it to another imaginary space. So I have this, and also another interest is that this space will somehow also become an ideal uh, space for people to take, pic take pictures because I have the nice light inside and then the settings becomes quite inviting so people can go inside, sit and take pictures. It's during model of photo so I guess it was also uh, fun. Um, some of the neighbors also uh, responding to the work very well. They have uh, another action to respond to the work. They uh, tear down the installation and then uh, before the opening. So we have to rebuild the whole thing again. And then after we rebuild it, uh, they come back and they also write poem on the box. How nice was that? <laughs> so they, they tear it down again and then uh, we rebuild it again. After the third time they come back, they tear it down again. The fourth time, I don't have enough boxes anymore so I can only <laughs> make a smaller one. And also, since um, we are making this uh, variation, I decided to, uh, instead of uh, having a, an opening for people to go inside, I, there's no opening at all, but through the small holes, you will see a picnic table inside and you will see uh, little settings. And of course, uh, they are also very uh, consistent. 
so they come back again and then tear the whole thing down in the very end uh, it was also the very last week of the exhibition uh, I decided to pile everything up to show that why uh, stripe <coughs> and then on the other side of the wall we put everything up to show another map I built cubes with uh, different projects. Another one which I like very much was the one uh, called Jelly Project One. Uh, the idea was because that uh, statue of uh, Norman Batum was uh, removed, and they were uh, the city. They uh, after cleaning it, they put it back to the original place. And they also want to have the school to produce a, a, a project to respond to the idea of China. I was um, very interested in this project, but also in a way because I, um, I, I didn't have the chance to visit China yet. So for me, China is a very close but also a very distant uh, experience. I have lots of Chinese friends. And uh, well, Taiwan for some people is also part of China, for some people. So that kind of uh, common but also distance experience, experience uh, I think, considering that the best way for me to pre represent to present China would be uh, showing my neighbors, not to show, not to really visit China. So I decided to visit all my neighbors because. Uh, at the time, I was still living on uh, Maisonneuf, very close to Cambodia, and in our high-rise buildings, there are tons of Chinese uh, neighbor neighbors. I believe is we have the most, the highest uh, population of Chinese in the building. So I decided to visit the neighbors, and also I propose a super medium. The medium is capable of record recording uh, sceneries feelings, emotions, sound, uh, scents, colors, lights. We are working with uh, photography and video and I think it would be nice if we had if we have something else which can overpower the two the two media. So I propose jelly. I propose jelly because uh, I was also um, well, I, I propose that uh, this kind of jelly called konjak, mm, it's it, uh, congealed in room uh, temperature around uh, 20 minutes. So I suppose that in these 20 minutes, this konjak would reserve, would preserve that uh, little space, preserve all those uh, emotions and sounds, everything. And if I can collect all these cone jar and bring them together, then in a way I was collecting a small, uh, some small, uh, some little universe, and I put them together. And through this little universe of the individual neighbors, we have we could have a picture of China. Sorry. So this. So basically, I uh, have a uh, hypothesis to explain the project. And then this is a picture of the building. And this is a letter I wrote to my neighbors asking their participation to let me go to their apartment for 20 minutes. And this is a translation of the text. And here are the, the end result of the collected uh, jellies. And during the production of the jelly, I also talk to them. I write down everything I th thought because uh, jelly is one super media and our brain is another one. We think, we feel, and if I can write down everything in a way, it's another uh, documentation corresponding to the jelly. 
So I write down all the notes, all the experience, and then I also translate all the notes. In the end, I pull all the jellies. I made two types of jellies, and I pull them all together into a, an aquarium. And another type of jelly, I put them into small cubes. The very last uh, cubes I have created um, is a small space, like a small, it's a sleeping room. The slapping room um, comes from the idea of working with pen. The pen uh, we <coughs> create for ourselves and the pen we have control or the pen we don't have control. At the time I was preparing a project to talk about a strange uh, Chinese um, legend because for some in the past, before uh, the 19th, uh, the 20th century, um, for quite a few poor people, if they don't have uh, enough, if their parents are were sick and if they don't have medicine to cure their parents, the best medicine they can use, they could use, was their own flesh. So that tradition, that legend was that mm, you can cut your own flesh and then make a soup, then your parents' uh, sickness will be. Cured. According to some historian, there are more than 1,000 Chinese people uh, did that. I was amazed by the fact that people was able to uh, to tolerate to conquer the pain, but also confused by the fact <coughs> that people. I wasn't sure how people people make the decision of of cutting their own. Uh, flash and also how, how they conquer the pen. And then so at the time when I was studying this uh, legend, I also saw quite a few news, uh, which were also about uh, their uh, parent and children relationship. But contrarily, they are not uh, kids trying to cure their parents. They are actually kids killed by their parents. In the end, I collect four stories. The four stories are... Okay. The first story was a little girl. Uh, she was beheaded by her grandfather. Um, the second story was a little girl. She was thrown into boiling water by her father. The third story was a little girl. She ate a uh, chocolate bar and she was punished, punished by her grandmother. Her grandmother asked her to run without stop. So she died. And the very last one was a little girl in the UK. Uh, she, her story is a little bit more complicated. She was uh, scared of dentists, and then one day she ate a hard candy, broke her uh, one of her te uh, teeth. And because she was afraid of dentists, she didn't really cooperate with dentists. Then the dentist decided. Uh, also, it's, it was the age that uh, all her milk teeth, prob it's probably the time for her to change all the, mi all the milk uh, teeth. So the dentist decided to remove all her eight teeth. And the little girl, after she, um, after she noticed that her mouth is full of blood but without any teeth, she refused to open her mouth anymore. So I was 
I was trying to figure out how would everything happen, and also um, is that us? Is that is that does does there is something always always uh, existing in our in our own body? Do we all have that very dark side? So I decided to work on this project to create an installation to respond to these four stories. The installation includes uh, the noodles, the rice, the, cho the chocolate, and the candies. The noodles, uh, I made four uh, portraits of noodles. And four, in Taiwanese, it means death. The noodle comes from a package uh, from uh, I bought in Chinatown, and which was produced in Taiwan, in the south of Taiwan, where that little girl, very close to the factory of that little girl, mm. yeah, very close to their own uh, noodle factories. Um, the father threw her into the boiling water because she was he was had a fight. He had a fight with. Uh, his partner, and uh, with with the mother, and the mother was so angry that she say, uh, "Why don't you just throw her into the boiling water?" And then the father did. Uh, the rice, and then the chocolate, chocolate, and then the candies. I want to show you the candies. I was interested in the fact that uh, we, um, how temptation, how, how, uh, how we face the desire, and how sweetness uh, has effect, has affected uh, the children. So I asked my son to work with me for this project. It's uh, around five minutes, but I'm going to show you just a little bit. What I did basically was asking him to uh, chew the candy, but not to swallow it. Oh, no,
He was very, very proud of himself. <laughs> yeah, in a way, he knows how good the uh, candy was, but also he. That's a kind of experience that he. Uh, yeah, probably the first time he experienced, he was able to conquer uh, that uh, desire, that temptation. Um, the very end, I'm showing you this slapping room. So in this installation, um, the installation here, sorry, not this one. Okay. <coughs> the whole show on the outside was the candies and the video of Shara eating bonbon. In the small room, there was a table. And then on this table, there's an instruction. The instruction asks the visitor to use the uh, wood stick to slap uh, the upper arm, slap here. And it asks the visitor to wait until the skin turns red, and then take a picture. After you have the picture taken, you can print it yourself, and then leave the picture inside the drawer. Um, we know what pen means, but we don't really know it until we experience it. That's something, uh, yeah, it's very subjective. But at least one thing for me is true that uh, knowing or understanding is different. <coughs> it's, it's different than the real experience. And no matter how gentle you hit yourself as long as you use it you hit yourself you your body is telling you something slightly different you still feel the pain so in the end quite a, people, quite a few people does try very hard to slap themselves that's it thank you Yeah, it's like I was offering him the candy, and then uh, he, uh, I told him you have to chew them, but you cannot swallow them. And he tried to try to negotiate with me because he want he think uh, the candy is sweet, and if you put it into the mouth, you should swallow it, you should eat it. And so I tried to convince him, and then I asked him to chew and then spit them on the table. So. The whole thing is like that. I wonder if you could speak a little bit more about the relationship with the camera, because a lot of photographers talk about the camera as a tool or an extension 
And it almost seems like you kind of personify it. Um, I like that very uh, well-known uh, sentence by uh, Bach. Uh, the camera is recording uh, something in front of in front of it, right? The idea of uh, how do we say being there, something being there, and that very basic uh, function is important because um, in a way, yes, we do doubt the reality, uh, how much reality the camera can provide us, but we also believe that uh, it is possible that uh, the camera simply uh, records what's happening in front of it. So my idea was to use the camera as a tool to to record, to make documentation. And then uh, through time, I also feel that company of using it as a tool to study the space, to study the city, or to study a relationship is actually, uh, it's actually very helpful. It makes me uh, have the courage to see things. So in a way, camera is the tool, like it's part of a scheme in my case. Another experience I had before I came to Montreal was that I was working for TV companies, right, to make documentaries. And that experience of hiding behind a uh, video camera also in a way, <coughs> um, probably, um, it it makes it give me give me the confidence that anything uh, happen in front of the camera is always already a kind of uh, performance, and uh, we can yeah it's it's a it's, it's a tool to create dialogue. Yeah. Mm. yeah, I'm interested in the the way you use the camera. Uh, what I see as an overall uh, theme is, of course, the skin as surface and also going beyond the surface. Um, I think I recognize it in your uh, um, title about the water and the lake as a mirror, is that we're used to photography being an image of the surface of things, and I feel like you use it as a tool to go deeper, like like jumping in the lake instead of just seeing your reflection in it, or breaking the reflection to see deeper. I feel that's the over all of your uh -huh. of your poetry. Maybe it's like the poetic aspect of yeah. your work. But Yushan hates me. <laughs> yeah. Because even though I do think that camera helps us to to really to understand or to construct new life, but in a way it's also in between. Um, yeah. I I wanted to say that your beginning work, which you photograph yourself and your partner, uh, always white background and it looks like these personal photos which is you usually when you complete a form for your immigration or whatever, you have to keep those photos, which in it, the body is suspends, sus like he said, it's a body uh, kind of owned by government, you know, in a white background, no smile, just be there as if, for me, it was like a practicing being a new citizen in here and try to be a good citizen, as if what it's been defined. It has this point of view, the camera is kind of a state, yeah, uh, because it's like uh, ident uh, photos for identification, right? For the IDs. Mm, but I think it's quite interesting that uh, we do have different ways to see ourselves, like um, like who. This might be a little bit over interpretation, but who owns the body or uh, who owns the images? I think they they are two different debates. Like these images, as long as they have been uh, taken, has they have been uh, collected in a way they they refers to um, to the facade. I guess the facade of a very temporary 
identity and I think uh, I, I don't know how much they can be uh, expanded I mean the personal because the identity um, we can see it from our own perspective and we can also see it from the society's or the government's uh, perspective. <coughs> So, yeah, there's tactic of it, I'm saying. This tactic of it was the same as tactic as they try to um, capture you in a very uh, Russian list, so that therefore you couldn't have been captured. So then, uh, the static of it looks like that beginning. Uh -huh. As if it has the same attitude, you repeat as the same attitude, but not if consciously. Yes. <laughs> uh -huh. um, I was just wondering, do you consider your work to be like, uh, like activism, or are you trying to create like social change? Are you like trying to like push people's boundaries? Like, is that part of it? And I'm just thinking specifically of like the installation in the street, and when you visited people's houses, and when you videotaped <coughs> the strangers. Like, is that what it's about, or is it like, you know? Well. I do feel a kind of responsibility, like since we have uh, the medium and we have a place to show the work, then I do feel that uh, responsibility. But um, it's there's also lots of limitation. Like um, I was quite sh in where I was shy on the street, so when I approach people, I don't really know how to um, push things further, even though I tried. And that kind of boundary actually becomes uh, something, uh, yeah, becomes a limitation that when I produce work, I, even though I, I concern some important topics, something I, I've seen, I want to include them in the work, but also uh, the way I approach the work is actually from a more personal level. I create things based on what I, was able to use in my surroundings. But the target, or yeah, the if there's a goal, I, I hope it's going to um, create more dialogues, not only about myself. But are you like interested in like, are you like, oh, people should interact with strangers more? Is that like part of it for you? Or, or uh, are you pushing, are you just pushing the boundaries with yourself kind of thing? Um, I, do we need to uh, pay more attention to strangers? Yes, I... Mm. But it's not really specifically what you're talking about. Yeah, okay. Um, I, I, uh, I like a society with harmony. And um, I think um, <coughs> to approach people or not, uh, I um, I like to uh, approach strangers, but I also like the fact that people leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> and I like to meet with someone, but also I also feel that sometimes communication is not very straightforward. Sometimes silence is more interesting than words. So yes, I do want to use my work to encourage certain type of uh, connections to encourage people to pay attention to others. But I don't mean so we go and then we meet with each other. I mean pay attention and then recognize <coughs> the others and recognize the difference, that would, that would be nice. Yeah. <coughs> Are there any other questions? Oh, there's one. Yeah. Can you just enlarge the right space? Rice base. Yes. <laughs> it was my very first project made in Montreal. You put the rice in somebody's face? Or <laughs> yes. It's, a, huh? it's not you? It's not me. Oh. Yeah. But I feel it was to, um, firstly, I think. 
to create this identity of uh, people with rights, right? And then secondly, I also interested in the process of eating. So I actually have a video of, they are a couple. So this couple, they are eating uh, the rice of each other's face. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think maybe we'll continue. We're not having a reception tonight. We're going to Fiddler's. You're all welcome to join us. We've booked the table there. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Chief Schaefer's a really interesting talk. Thank you all, too.